This is so ridiculous. Yet another person claiming it's racist to have a white Santa. You know? And by the way, for all you kids watching at home, Santa just is white. Yeah. Jesus was a white man, too. <laughs> And you heard her, she said it, Megyn Kelly, Jesus. Not only is Jesus white, but Santa is white. So we had to bring a former Christian, white, Irish, Englishman, and get this, a former believer in Santa too, to clear up this topic here on The D Show. We'll be right back. This is The D, The D This is the Dean This is the Dean Show. 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 Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah. John Fontaine. Yep. How are you? You heard the clip. We're going to play it again. Megan Kelly. Yes. We're going to go to this clip right now. Okay. And by the way, for all you kids watching at home, Santa just is white. Yeah. Jesus was a white man, too. So you heard her say it, and you heard me open the show. I had to bring a former Christian and white, Irish, British, yes. English. Yes, English. Former believer in Santa. Yes to help us cover this topic. Yes. So what do you think about what she said? Well, it's, um, it's a fictional character. You know, no one's actually seen the real fan Father Christmas. In England, we call him Father Christmas. I know you call him Santa, right? Yes. So, um, yeah, it's fictional. You know, there's, there's a few people in history which he's based on. Uh, we've got St. Nicholas, uh, who's a, a Christian bishop uh, in the area of Turkey, which we know today as Turkey. And St. Nicholas was, uh, was from that part of the world, the Mediterranean, and he, he wouldn't have been white, you know, this area. He certainly, certainly wouldn't have been my complexion, mm -hmm. uh, which I would regard as white. Um, so I, I don't know where she would get this idea that uh, Santa is white. Mm -hmm. But it's fictional. You know, the, the fact is that arguing over a fictional character doesn't exist. So you can make him, he can be black if you... Believe in him, he can be Chinese, doesn't matter because he's fake. It's fake. Yeah. <laughs> but St. Nicholas, by the way, let, let's go to this clip. There's some uh, yeah. forensic evidence that also shows that he wasn't white. Yeah. Of course, the real St. Nicholas was from a part of the world that is now Turkey. And according to forensic scientists who studied research originally commissioned by the Vatican, he probably looked something like this. So in, in this clip that we just saw, it obviously shows him being someone from the Mediterranean region there, someone like a... Yeah, someone who would brown, maybe have darker skin, yeah. you know, to cope with the sun and things like that. But yeah, he's not white, yeah. you know. <laughs> but, I mean, um, I mean, St. Nicholas himself, uh, he, 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 as a historical figure, he actually took part in the Council of Nicaea, uh, 325 AD, which was actually the council uh, which decided that Jesus was a part of God. So it's a very important uh, council. Mm -hmm. uh, very important for the history of Christianity. Yeah. So we'll get to Jesus in a, yeah. in a minute. Let's still. Uh, you, so you grow up. You grew up. Tell us a little about this. You grew up believing in Santa Claus that uh, you know the big fat man was going to come down to the chimney, yeah. leave his reindeer up on the uh, on the roof, and come bring your presents. Yeah, we used to believe this. I, I, my family taught me that Father Christmas was real. Uh, Father Christmas was coming to the, come into our school. You know, we'd sit on his knee. He would give us a present and ask us what we wanted, and and we would um, and we we believed in Father Christmas. You know, it was a reality. He was real, and when we're told that he's not real, it's it's a big shock to the system. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, it's a moment in our life when we remember exactly where we was at the time. Uh, you you mentioned something that you at one point in your life you thought he was racist. Yeah, I mean, I used to think Father Christmas or Santa was racist because. After the holidays, I was going to school, and uh, my Pakistani friend didn't have any presents, you know. So Father Christmas, he missed out all the uh, Pakistanis, all the Africans. Mm -hmm. You know, it seemed that only white people got gifts, 
Yeah, <laughs> that's really interesting. We got a clip over here. We're going to go to that. Actually, uh, uh, Jesus, he, I mean, not Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, but uh, Santa, he's also been uh, locked up a few times. There's toys and electronics everywhere. I bet everything in that bag is hot. It's larceny, criminal trespass. I think we've got enough. Why don't we just head on downtown, huh? I'm going to need a... Whoa, he's running! What? <laughs> so you can see Santa here getting locked up, yeah. you know. But also, you, you have, in today's day and age, you have a lot of pedophiles. Yeah. You have a, so I, I wouldn't really advise, would you, you know, letting your, your, your child sit on some stranger's mm -hmm. lap, especially in a yeah. sick society today that we, you know, mm -hmm. with all these weirdos out there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you don't know who he is. You don't know who he is. So how did you snap out of this? I just, I, just, I came to the conclusion that there's something going on. You know, I mean, I, I, was, I was, I can't remember how old I was, but I was questioning my mother. I was yeah. saying, is he real? Is he not real? And uh, eventually she told me that he was not real, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, yeah, it's a big shock. Big shock. But it, it, it makes me wonder why we teach our children this. You know, why would we lie to our children? Because it, it's, um, it's not a good thing to do. It teaches you that you can't trust your own parents. If I can't trust my own parents, who can I trust? Mm -hmm. Yeah, people see it as a bit of fun, but in reality, it's not really helping. But isn't it? I mean, you were a former Christian, mm. and any be uh, believing Bible, Bible believing Christian, mm. if he looks into his Bible, mm. the opposite is told about Christmas that you shouldn't, mm. because when we look at the roots of Christian of 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 uh, Christmas, we see that these have pagan origins. Yes. So the Bible says, don't follow pagan cultures mm. and actually you know it's severe against it that god will punish you yes did you know about yeah. that yeah i mean all the prophets were sent throughout time to correct the mistakes which their people was making you know because their people was following uh, uh you know customs which were not a part of the true religion uh such as abraham peace be upon him he, he was correcting the mistakes of his forefathers and the, the pagan religions which they were following and the same thing with, with Jesus, peace be upon him. You know, he was correcting the mistakes of his people. And this is the thing, we shouldn't be following uh, pagan origins. I mean, if we look at Christmas, uh, there's many origins, you know, such as Mithra. Mithra was a, a sun god, uh, which, was, which was born on, on the 25th of December. You know, this, this sun god died, was crucified, was, was uh, three days later, came back to life. It's, it's the same story as what we're hearing uh, with, with, with the origins of Christmas, you know, the 25th of December. You know, I mean, even according to the Bible and the Quran, uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, could not have been born around the time of December or the time of where, when they're declaring or, or uh, suggesting he was born. It would have been uh, most probably in the summertime. Do you really think now Jesus would, if he was alive today, A, would he be celebrating Christmas? Would he condemn it, condone it? What would be his attitude to a lot of the things that are attributed to him in today's time? Yeah, I mean, we can see many uh, traditions are formed uh, from, from the supposedly Jesus' birthday. But we should look at, the, look at the teachings of Jesus himself. You know, he, he never told us to celebrate his, his birthday. This was not something that we were told to do. And we should, and more importantly, we should. He would never told us to take him as God. You know, this is this is the, this is the new thing. People uh, taking Jesus as the Son of God or God Himself. You know, we should we should follow the teachings of Jesus, where Jesus says, "Worship the One Creator." You know, this is this is the message we should be we should be following. Yeah, if you stem now, if you look at his teachings, like you're saying, mm. so uh, these holidays obviously are have pagan origins. Was mm. he even born on, would, can you say that he was born on this day, the 25th? Certainly not. He wasn't born on this day. We can see, from, as I said, from the Quran and the Bible, we can see that he was most likely born in the summertime. Uh, with a lot of evidence to show that he was born within the sun, summertime. So, I mean, you, you would say we almost, before we go to break, that a lot of these lies, they end up catching up to you because this is what atheists, they take this, you know, and they come from Christian backgrounds and they mm. see a lot of these things that just don't make sense, you know, lies after lies, and then yeah. they end up, you know, leaving these man-made religions. Yeah, I mean, this is the, the thing, what's happened, especially in, in Britain as well, many people have left religion altogether because they can see the problems with uh, the Bible, and the Bible doesn't make sense. They can see the Bible is not from the Creator. 
Therefore, they leave religion altogether. And th this is why in Islam we have to try and help people come back to the correct religion, which is Islam. And that's the interesting thing. The, what we have is, is something that's pointing us to asking for evidence. So when we look at the evidence, we see that, no way, the, the Creator sanctioned this. This is not from any of His prophets, including yeah. Jesus, who we love and revere as one of the mightiest messengers that God sent. Yeah. So we'll be right back with more. We have the next statement by Megyn Kelly that we want to clarify. And hopefully she's tuning in and she can get the benefit. And because we're really not trying to bash her at all, we're just trying to clear up and bring to light some of these facts, not yeah. fiction. So we cleared up if Jesus or Santa was white yes. and who he was, mm. fiction, fiction, fiction. And then we'll also, and, and most people obviously know this, but then we'll, we're going to get into Jesus. She made a bold statement talking about that he was white. Yeah. And then we're going to talk about his true mission. Mm. When we come back with the author of Jesus and the Injil, John Fontaine here on The Dean Show. We'll be right back. To save one life is as if you've saved all humanity. Show kindness to your parents, just as they cared for you when you were young. Give in charity of the good things you earn. Even a smile is a charity. Explore the real values of Islam. Find the missing piece. Call us toll free at 877-Y-ISLAM. Back here on the Dean Show with the author of Jesus and the Injil, John Fontaine, former believer in Santa. Yes. Not anymore? Not anymore. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to the... Unfortunately. Let's go to the, to the clip again. Jesus yeah. was a white man too. Jesus is a white man too. What do you got to say about that? Well, Jesus was from the children of Israel. Is that correct? Yes. Of course. I mean, we, we all accept that, you know, uh, Jews, Christians and Muslims accept that Jesus from the, was from the children of Israel. So he would have been from the part of the world in the Middle East. Uh, we say that he was born in, born in Bethlehem and he was from the Middle East, you know, the Bethlehem. So he was most likely, again, not white like me. Where, funny enough, if we see the Christians the way they... Uh, paint Jesus and draw Jesus, he would usually look something like me. He would have mostly maybe red hair, red beard, and a thobe. You know, he would look like a Muslim. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So Jesus was, w w w in reality, was from the Middle East. He was, mm -hmm. he was not white in the sense of the way I'm white. He was not European. He, he was from the Middle East. So. And that, that becomes a big problem when you give the attributes of the creator to the attributes of the human being, and then you mm. give them a color, skin tone, yeah. a nationality, yeah. a language. So now people start, now the race wars begin, because yeah. now you have the African Americans who are making Jesus being black, yeah. the um, Hispanics, you got Jesus, yeah. you got a picture yeah. of him, and now it becomes a, a, a race problem, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and this is, they've not only done this with Jesus, they've also done this with God. Uh, if you go to Italy, you, you look on the, the walls, you know, uh, God is also um, a white man. You know, he looks Italian. Yeah. You know, talk, you have to, you know, there's appealing to the audience, if you like. The, the Italian stallion, mm -hmm. if you like, you know, he's a, he, he, he would look similar to Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. You know, he's quite a... So, so well, if you go to Africa, there's parts of Africa where Jesus, uh, you see on the churches, I've seen myself, that Jesus and the angels... Uh, are carved into the into stone. They look black. Yeah, this so, is where where is it? This is in Senegal. In Senegal, yeah, parts of Senegal, Sierra Leone. Yeah, you know they portray Jesus as black. Uh huh. So I mean, it, it's it, it's about people trying to fit in and trying to fit their beliefs within what they feel comfortable. And they probably both of them that end up uh, Santa Claus and Jesus. If they were trying to fly nowadays, they probably end up on a no fly list. <laughs> Right? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, isn't it true? Yeah. I mean, generally, you know, we, we don't get an easy 
You don't go through the airports easy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, so uh, moving along, I mean, I think now that we've cleared up, okay, the doubts about that, mm. that obviously Santa, and this is that time of Christmas, we see mm. that there was no sanction for it in the Bible. Mm. Jesus never taught it, nor was he born mm. a- on that day. Now the message, mm. I think this is even more important because we have a lot of fictional characters and fictional events. They're just made up and suited for the times. And f- a lot of this make-believe is just going on and on. And people are just getting fed up. And like you mentioned earlier, you know, the, mm. the atheist people are leaving religion. And now here comes Islam telling the truth. Mm. What was the true message of Jesus? You know, what, what did he actually proclaim? Mm. Did he proclaim to be God? Islam clearly says no. Let's elaborate mm. on this and truly letting the people know that this, what we're going to mm. say right now, this is not fiction. This is mm. fact. Yeah. The true message of Jesus, peace yeah. be upon him. What was that? Yeah, the, it, the thing when Islam came, it came with the, the final revelation, which is the Quran, which is a perfect guidance for, for which we use in our daily life. You know, it's not just a law, but it's, it's teachings within which we would take use it as an example, not only the Qur'an, but also the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we use the example of his life in our daily life. And when we look into uh, the, the previ- previous, uh, if we look into other holy uh, books, which claim to be holy books, uh, such as the Bible, we see that there's a lack of teachings within the New Testament, especially uh, within the Christianity, which actually, which actually lead Christians to actually now look in other in other directions for teachings, uh, to for direction in life as well. So when we look at the Quran, we see it's a final revelation and it is from the Creator. And the Quran talks about the previous prophets. It talks about Jesus in depth. It talks about how uh, he was he was born. There's a whole chapter uh, named after his mother Mary, uh, the, the Surah Maryam. Uh, which talks about the birth of Jesus and, and, and also uh, Surah Imran it goes through the, the, the family of Jesus as well and we can see that Jesus, peace be upon him he came with the same message as all the prophets which was to worship the one creator, the one God and the way we do that is that we have uh, the five pillars of Islam the first form of worship is to acknowledge your creator Okay, this, the, the first thing we have to do is acknowledge that, that there is a creator and that only the Creator is worthy of worship, and this is this is the this is the first pillar of Islam. So once people understand that, and they can move on to the rest. But yeah. so we stick to that first. That acknowledging that Jesus, mm. peace be upon him, was the paragon example of human excellence. Yes, the best of character, a teacher just like Abraham, Moses, yes. teaching the message mm. that was sent by the Creator for humanity. Yes, but now. People get confused because you'll ask someone, do you believe Jesus is, is God? Was he sent by God? And most people agree, yeah, he was sent by God, but he's the son of God. Yes. So they attribute God yeah. having a son yeah. and then being one. Yeah. How I do mean, you clear this confusion? I mean, we, we look at, when we say the son of God, Jesus, I mean, we don't be, as Muslims, we don't believe that Jesus is a physical son of God. Now, if you're talking about metaphorical, we can see that metaphorically we're all children of God. Okay, uh, David in the Bible is described as his, as a son of God, but uh, the Jews and the Christians have never said that he's a physical son of God. You see, so we can see even within the Bible that it's metaphorical. Okay, so Jesus, yeah, as a metaphorically a son of God, but according to Islam, it, God does not have children. Okay, God is not like the creation. We can't imagine the Creator is beyond our comprehension. Okay, so Jesus is a prophet of God. He is one of the mightiest messengers of God. He came with the teachings and we follow Jesus. We love Jesus as a Muslim. We have to love Jesus. If we don't love Jesus and we don't believe in Jesus as a prophet, we, are, we, we can't be Muslim. Mm-hmm. Okay, because this is one of the articles of faith as a Muslim to believe in all the previous prophets. Now, if you ask, obviously Jesus, peace be upon him, mm-hmm. he, did, he didn't speak Greek. He didn't speak English. He spoke Aramaic, correct? Aramaic, and yes. you talk about this in your book, Jesus in the Injil. Mm-hmm. So Jesus today, if we, we mention a word that he's never heard, like for instance, was Jesus a human? Was okay. Jesus a human? I think everybody who knows English would say yes, yes. correct? Yes. But now we're going to use a word that sums up what he did, his whole mission, and that word is Islam and Muslim. Oh, yeah. Can we link that back 
yes. to Jesus, that Jesus was a Muslim who did Islam and now connect it all together because many people have the misnotion, the misconception yes. that Islam is some new religion. Yes. You know, he's, this is something new that came along. Christianity yeah. came way before it, but you know, when we explain to them that no, Islam has been yeah. there from the beginning, Jesus was a Muslim, but now there's some confusion, like how is that? Can you yeah. answer this? I mean, people always say, I hear this all the time, you know, they say, oh, Islam came later. No, it's the first prophet in Islam is Adam, peace be upon him. You know, Prophet Adam. And, and Jesus and all the prophets were worshipping the one creator. If we look at Abraham, peace be upon him, he, he was not Jewish or Christian. And no Jew or Christian will tell you that Abraham is, is Jewish. Okay? Abraham was a monotheist. He was submitting to the one creator, the one true God, uh, as according to the, what he, he had been revealed. And the Arabic word for this is Muslim. So someone who submits to God is a Muslim. Okay? So at the time of Moses, Moses, peace be upon him, was a Muslim. He was submitting to God, the one true God, the creator of the universe. The same way Jesus, peace be upon him, was submitting to the one true God. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the Arabic word for this is Islam. Now, you obviously being a former Christian, was yes. in, your, your, in your studying, did yes. this fascinate you? And this is one of the things that led you to Islam along with all the evidence, not blind, just blindly jumping into it because mm. you have to sacrifice a lot to leave yeah. your, your parents' religion to come over to Islam. Yeah. Is this one of the things that fascinated yeah, you? Yeah, I had many questions. You know, I was asking the church, I was asking the people at the church and they couldn't answer me. They were just telling me, have faith, have blind faith. I yeah. couldn't. I wanted yeah. answers. Yeah. And if you want answers, you have to go where they have answers. Yeah. And when I started to look into Islam, they had answers. All know? the answers you found? Every them? answer you needed. Everything was made clear. Purpose yeah. of life? Everything's there. Why you've been created? Everything. Where are you going when you die? Everything. Everything is there? The Quran is the perfect revelation for the rest of time. Yeah. yeah. All right, we, we want to assuage any fear because now we have some more questions because of the skeptics might think in terrorism, his suppression of women. And, and Megyn Kelly is probably tuning in. She's like, mm. oof. But come on, what they do to their women, right? Yeah. Just hold on, Megan, please. We're going to address these issues with the author of Jesus and the Injil here on The Dean's Show. Jihad, often mistranslated as holy war. The word jihad means to struggle. Islam does not preach violence. It does not preach vicious holy war. It certainly does not condone terror and suicide bombing. Islam preaches compassion, tolerance, and justice. Find the truth about Islam. Call toll-free 877-WHY-ISLAM. Order your free copy of the Quran today. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone If a lies by my side I am not afraid to stand alone Back here on The Dean Show And hopefully our special guest tuning in, Megan Kelly We got to clear this up for her And now you've just expressed What Islam is really about Worshipping the creator, not the creation yeah. Explain this confusion about the literal meaning that God actually had a son, because that doesn't make sense, mm. you know? Mm. And when you really think about it, how can, you know, it does make sense. No. Did, were you battling with that for some time? And the whole idea of God dying, you know, you, God sending his, his only son. Yeah. Why wasn't a daughter? Do you ever the, think, no one can explain it. But why, I mean, look, if this is yeah. true, why, I mean, isn't this, you know, shouldn't mm. this, the, the women, the feminist movement, jump up and say, why, why didn't God have a daughter? <laughs> yeah. think, I, yeah. Right? Yeah. And then they it's come together and have grandchildren? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. doesn't make sense. No. I mean, it, God cr created Adam. Yes. So how can God be Adam? Yes. How can God, how can God be a part of the creation? Mm -hmm. You know, the creator cannot be a part of the creation. You know, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's, uh, and it, it, when you start to question... They, they won't answer your questions in, in the church. Yeah. No one has answers because there's no answer. And you, you went through this. I went through, through this, yeah. Yeah. So Megan Kelly now, she's hopefully God willing. We want all of our viewers to reach out to her on her Twitter and send this to her and have, have her get involved and really see where we're coming from because there's a lot yeah. of misconceptions. But you got an American, 
and the Irish English here. English, We're not yeah. Arab because that's one of the things people think. Okay, you yeah. know, you're you're a Muslim, so you're an Arab, and we see that obviously mm -hmm. Jesus was not white; he was a Semitic. Yes. So yes. he spoke Aramaic, sister oh, language yeah. to Arabic. He called on God by Allah, Allahu, Allah, right? Yes. So this is amazing. You're learning some very interesting, amazing facts. But now someone's like, look, not every, how does the saying go? Not every Muslim is a, not every terrorist is a Muslim, but every Muslim is a terrorist, right? Yeah. And people ask you, so, oh, you became saying. a terrorist. As soon as you tell them now, you yeah. became one who submitted to the will of yeah. the creator. Yeah. You're a terrorist now? That's what, what they all, say. Yeah. yeah, so what, what do you say to assuage any fear? So, you know, people are really having some bizarre, crazy things associated with Islam. Well, many times people judge Islam, or they judge, they judge Islam by the people, by the followers. And that's not correct. You wouldn't judge a car by the driver, would you? No. You know, you would judge the car by the instruction manual, which is the Quran. Okay, so we have to judge Islam by the actual fundamental principles of Islam, if you go to the Qur'an and the Hadiths, the, the sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we can judge Islam by this. And when you see this, you see that Islam is perfect. And the funny thing is, when you look on, online or you look into the media, whenever they attack Islam, they attack the Muslims. Okay, They don't actually attack the sources of Islam. They don't attack the Qur'an. They don't attack the Hadiths. They attack the, the actual Muslims. But when you see people attacking Christianity, they tend to look at the contradictions in the Bible, they look at the problems with the actual source. Do you understand where, yeah. where I'm coming from? Because they, they see that the, the source has a lot of problems. But the thing with Islam is the sources in Islam are perfect. As I say, we have the original uh, Quran, uh, letter for letter, word for word. It's the same Quran which we recite uh, every day which we had at the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Any contradictions in the Quran? Because people say, okay, look, you know, something that was written that long time ago, mm -hmm. these men were inspired, they wrote the Bible, so even with all the mistakes and contradictions, mm -hmm. not trying to disparage on anybody, just trying to bring, just like we brought mm -hmm. Santa Claus to light, you know, the yeah. tooth fairy, we didn't talk about him, yeah. but you know, now mm -hmm. we're trying to bring this to light, the true message of Jesus, peace yeah. be upon him. Amen? Yeah, I mean, and the thing with me, I didn't just accept Islam, I tried to prove it wrong for many years. It, I, I, maybe two years, I was, I was pro trying to prove Islam wrong. You know, I was going to, to the Qur'an, to the Hadith, to try and find something to, to, pro to disprove Islam, and I couldn't find it. No, Eventually, you... I had to submit myself to Islam. But do you think before we leave, we have to cut out, people have this illusion in their head, what the truth is. They want God to look like this color, mm -hmm. like them, speak this language, and now when the message doesn't fit with what they want it to be, it becomes a problem. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. And now, isn't this an obstacle for many people? Because you have to humble yourself. It's not like, what can God do for me? It's like, what can I do for my Creator? Yes. So when the message comes, yeah. now you have to eliminate all of this racism, all of this yeah. hate, and block it out, and really just yeah. you know, examine it yeah. humbly. This is a part of the submission, you know, because everyone be before Islam, you're... You, your ego is telling you that God should be white or God should be black. No, God is something that you cannot comprehend. And once you understand this, then you can submit to God. And you have to think of it like this. If, the crea if we look at the creation, okay, now if we look into the heavens and the earth and we look into the stars and, 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 and the universe, subhanAllah, if, if, if God created the universe, surely this God is worthy of worship. Yeah, and we can't see God. We can't even look at the sun. If we look at the sun, we go blind. We can't even imagine the next solar system. You understand where I'm coming from? So how can we imagine God? How can we see God? We can't. It's beyond our comprehension. Yeah. So when once we understand that that, that God has created the universe, this God is worthy of worship. Mm -hmm. And as I say, the, the the first form of worship is acknowledging your Creator. Actually, acknowledging that He is there that there is a creator and acknowledging that he is worthy of worship. And you do this by testifying and you, you make a statement, you testify the shahada, which is the declaration of faith. And you say that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah, God, and that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final messenger. And once you accept this, you have come into the fold of Islam. And that's all it takes. It's so easy to become a Muslim. And this is the same, I mean, declaration you'd make during the time of Jesus. If you were living during the time of Jesus, yeah. there's, during the time of Jesus, there's nothing worthy of worship except the Creator, and yeah. Jesus is the Messenger. 
yeah. not the God or the okay. son, literal son exactly. of God. Correct? So you start to connect this to make sense. So mm -hmm. terrorism with Islam, baloney? Exactly. Uh, uh, suppression the, the, suppression of women? Doesn't happen. Baloney? Yeah. So all these things, people, yeah. if they really look yeah. at it. I mean, we, we're not denying that, that uh, maybe some people are oppressed yeah. by Muslims. But Muslims are not perfect, okay, but Islam is. If, if, this, if this is happening, this is against Islam. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So much to talk about. Go ahead. Uh, Just one, we... one last thing. Uh, the reason it's so important to submit to your Creator, okay, because it's easy to believe in the Creator when we look into the, into the proofs, but you have to submit, okay? Satan believes in the Creator, okay? He believes that the Creator exists, but it's not enough, mm -hmm. okay? You have to submit to the Creator. You have to acknowledge that only the Creator is worthy of worship. Give the example that you gave about someone denying their own mother. Yeah, I mean, if, if I'm a good person, I do the best amount of good deeds in the world. You know, I can, I can be Nelson Mandela, okay? But if I ignore my own mother, am I a good person? No. The, it outweighs everything I do. So how can I be a good person, a truly good person, if I don't acknowledge the Creator? That's deep. Yeah. Thank you very much. We, we, we look, look, we got to exactly. still, you know, it's yeah. coming around that time. Christmas, so we're thinking about doing another show. Yes. You're going to be around? Yeah, I'm around. Yeah. Okay, so God willing, we'll have you back again. Yeah. All right, Inshallah. thank you very much. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much for tuning in. Megan Kelly, hopefully, if she hasn't watched it or she's watching, you guys can reach out to her and get her this show on her Twitter page. We'll have this on our Twitter page. Go ahead and forward it to her. And God willing, if she tunes in, you know, because there are a lot of misconceptions. You know, when the truth comes... You know, she was an attorney, and she can understand that, you know, the attorney's job is to try to, if you're in this part of the law where you're trying to discredit someone, so an old lady comes up, very innocent, but if you're in the opposition, your, your job is to, to make this lady look out to be the liar. So now you have Islam coming, and it's the truth, but it has all of these negative connotations attributed to it. But when you come to, to know it for what it is, that it's simplicity, the believable message, and then you as a woman, if Me Megyn Kelly, you're tuning in, you, you start to see these facts that the first person to embrace the submission to the, to the creator when it came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, during his time, was a woman. That's right. The, the first person to die who was a martyr, defending Islam, she stood for Islam, was a woman. The greatest scholar in Islam was a woman. So talk to a Muslim woman and see if she's subjugated or oppressed because that's usually what they'll bring up. And then... You see that through watching the Dean Show, you see that a lot of these lies that have been told to us, the whole Santa Claus fable, and then you have the two fairy, and then Jesus, his true message. We tried to clear, we clear that up. Jesus now, never claiming to be God or a literal son of God. So if you were lied to once, you'd be lied to twice. But Islam sets it straight and gives you the evidence and the proof so you can... Go ahead and submit knowing that indeed this is the way of life from the Creator that gives you peace, prosperity, and purpose in this life and paradise in the next. Definitely, without a doubt, you'll come to know that if you humbly seek the guidance from your Maker, your Creator. So hopefully this show has been a benefit. And during this time, now it's time for us to really reflect if this was brought to your attention and to go beyond just blindly following the customs and cultures of your grandparents, forefathers, and be someone who is humbly seeking to know really what's the purpose of life, why have I been created, and where am I going when I die. Tune in every week to The Dean Show. Follow us. We'll have this posted on our Facebook and our Twitter, and let's help get this message to our, hopefully, our new fan of The Dean Show, Megan Kelly. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be unto you.